Gamma rays are the highest energy form of electromagnetic radiation or light. So at the very long wavelength or low energy end are radio waves. As you increase the energy or decrease the wavelength, you go up through the electromagnetic spectrum, you get to where we see with our own eyes. And as the energy increases, you go through ultraviolet and then x-rays and then gamma rays. A single gamma ray has the energy of about a billion visible light photons, which are the kind of light that we see with our eyes. When we look at the universe in gamma rays, we see other galaxies, black holes, tremendous explosions, and all sorts of things that are changing and varying on very rapid time scales. Gamma rays are particularly difficult to detect simply because the gamma rays of the range probed by glass cannot penetrate through our atmosphere, so therefore we have to send a satellite above the surface of the Earth. GLAST is the Gamma Ray Large Area Space Telescope, and it will study from space high energy gamma ray sources throughout the universe. When you reach the gamma ray band, um, light needs to be considered more as a set of particles rather than a wave. And this fundamentally drives how we detect gamma rays. E equals mc squared is Einstein's realization that light and mass are in some way equivalent, that they can be converted back and forth. And we use the process of transformation of energy into mass as the way we detect gamma rays. And the process we use called pair production is the conversion of energy into mass. In particular, we convert it into two particles that have mass, an electron and a positron. Then the electron and positron are detected by layers of silicon strip detectors that detect the passage of that charged particle. And in that way, we actually get a track in the detector that tells us where the charged particle was and when it uh, interacted in the telescope. And from that, we can reconstruct its direction and then figure out where the gamma ray came from. After the tracking detector, the particles continue on into a very massive one and a half ton detector called the calorimeter, where the energy is further converted into more particles. And by counting the number of particles in this shower, we get a very good measure of the energy of the gamma ray. The phenomena that GLAST studies really go beyond the everyday experience, and in a sense, they tell us about the inner workings of the most extreme systems. So glass pushes physics beyond the physics that has been in our everyday understanding. I guarantee there are going to be discoveries coming from this instrument that none of us, none of us have anticipated, simply because we've never had anything of this power in this end of the wavelength band to explore the universe with. The world is on a threshold right now of an unprecedented era of scientific discovery, much akin to what happened uh, the revolution of quantum mechanics. I think there's, there's a whole lot that we could learn about the universe. At the sort of astro-engineering level, we learn about how these quasars and these pulsars, indeed even the sun, the solar flares, how they work, what are the mechanisms that operate there, what are the means by which protons and electrons are changed into very high energy cosmic rays which can create the gamma rays that we're seeing. We've spent a lot of time in our scientific collaboration getting ready for the data by making our best guesses as to what we might discover. But in the end, nature's going to tell us what's out there. And I'm hoping and I fully expect we're going to get a lot of surprises.